Hello, and welcome to your favorite podcast, Closing Deals in Heels. This is your podcast host, Kayla Hodges. Today, we are discussing something so important. Ladies, 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 this is essential if you actually want to be excellent in sales. And it is your ability to take on challenges. Unfortunately, if you want to be great in sales, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable. And recently, I created a broadcast channel on my Instagram account, Kayla Living Boldly. And I asked the question, I asked whether or not the ladies there felt comfortable in regards to challenges, in regards to overcoming obstacles, overcoming things that came their way. Do they embrace challenges and like, hey, like this is a moment for us to like learn and grow? Do they possibly avoid challenges? I mean, like, absolutely not. I don't want to deal with this. Or is it kind of like mediocre in the middle, halfway in the middle, where they kind of like it kind of don't to just what it is and they have to deal with it. Now, this would be okay to avoid challenges or to not really deal with it if you were not trying to be excellent in sales. Sales, understanding sales, mastering sales, whether you're in B2B, B2C, door-to-door, B2G, it all requires some level of uncomfortability. It requires you to face challenges and face them with the intention of trying to overcome them face adversity, face uncomfortability. And by doing so, you create this beautiful thing called resiliency. Your ability to be resilient will only help and support you in regards to you really paving a path for yourself to create massive levels of wealth and income that some people only dream about. Really taking this seriously asking yourself if you're willing to do the things that most people are not willing to do in order for you to achieve what you want to achieve. Now, regardless of your industry, sometimes sales can be a little bit difficult. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> there are situations that you don't foresee. Sometimes people throw you a, a curve and you have to think on your feet and come up with what to say and what to do and Some of that cannot feel as fun. Or maybe you need to go get a meeting that you weren't necessarily thinking of getting before or or know how to get the meeting or know how to get past a gatekeeper or know how to go close a large client that you've never closed that large of a client before. And like all these feelings are coming up for you. What do you do in these moments? Because the moments of uncomfortability really, really shape you in your career. I really wish that you could read one book, listen to one podcast, and then all of a sudden you would be a master at sales and you know exactly what to do in every single situation. You know what to say, you know how to act, you know what questions to ask, you know how to respond appropriately to every single objection that they throw your way. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And so what would it require from you to actually master this craft? Earlier today, I was um, talking to um, one of my clients, Amanda, And we were talking about the necessary disciplines that is required from you in order for you to be in control of your life, in order for you to really, you know, do the damn thing and and feel fully, feel rounded, like fully, what is that word? Like, when you feel fully equipped in every area of your life, when you're doing everything full out. And what do we mean by that? I mean that she wasn't just focusing on her sales skills when she was trying to learn how to master sales. She was focusing in every area of her life, making the decision that she wanted to be the absolute best, not the best just on her team, the best within herself. How could she show up as the best version of herself? Well, first of all, she's going to have to take care of her health, take care of her body, take care of her mindset. Um, You know, doing the disciplines that are necessary, going to bed early, getting enough sleep. And I know that there's a lot of people that say, hey, well, you don't really have to have a morning routine to be successful. Like, just get up and do the damn thing and go after it. And that's really great and all. But I'm telling you from woman to woman that sometimes we are not built to get up and go like that. Sometimes taking committed action like that is is great and important, but we can't be taking committed action all day long or we might burn out. 
In fact, you are actually taking rest breaks and you taking time for yourself to honor yourself, to pour into yourself actually will give you the ability to have more energy to complete whatever it is that you're trying to complete. So today I want to give you some tacticals, tangibles, and some stretches that you get to do in order for you to really challenge yourself and evaluate yourself with where you are willing to go in terms of what you want in your life. Now, I don't know about you, but maybe you do want more. Most humans want more than what they are. Most humans are not really happy with where they are. They want more. They want to become more. They want to do more, which is all fine and it's great and all. But at the same time, most people are not willing to do what they want to do in order to get to where they want to go. Have you ever thought about like a vision or a dream or something that you wanted to have in your life? Maybe you've been thinking about it since you're a little kid. You've envisioned it. You wanted it. You dreamed about it. And oh my God, like it's all you think about. Maybe sometimes you compare yourself to others that do have it or something similar. And from that, this dream, this goal, this vision for what you created sometimes becomes the master of you. Sometimes you want something so bad that's so far away from you that it makes you not present to the moment today. It allows you to not learn how to be grateful and happy for where you are in the very moment. Your kids don't get to really feel the experience of you being present with them. Your partner doesn't get to feel that experience because you're constantly thinking about why am I not at this one moment. Instead of you learning how to be the master of your own dream, the master of your own destiny, the master of your own vision for your life, your goal for your life, you got to learn how to create both ends for yourself. I'm not the person that could tell you whether or not you are overworking yourself or whether or not you're not doing enough. That is going to be up to you. You can honestly ask yourself, am I doing every single thing in my capability to get to where I want to go? If the answer is no, like, hey, like it's time to take a minute and figure out where you're not loving on yourself. But if the answer is yes... You also get to ask yourself, am I maybe burning myself out? Your willingness to invite challenges into your life. Have you ever heard the saying, new levels, new doubles? If you want to play a big game, sometimes there's going to be bigger problems, bigger obstacles, bigger challenges. And if you really, really want something, you got to be willing to face it. And that also means that you got to be willing to fail on your ass, fall down, and be willing to pick yourself back up and try again. And if you fail again, you pick yourself up back up and you try again. And then if you fail again, you pick your ass back up and you try again. If somebody doesn't answer, you know, a, a call in the first lead or maybe they like got the wrong impression of you, hung up, well, like, hey, like try again. Instead of doing the same thing that I did last time, I'm going to evaluate it. If I called somebody and I'm calling outbound leads and I'm calling like insurance leads and somebody answers the phone, they didn't like how I called them, they hung up. Instead of calling the next person the same way, maybe I should stop and think and evaluate that and see if maybe I can do it a little bit differently. Hey, was I talking too fast? Hmm. Did they receive that well? Hmm. Was the person just a jerk? Hmm. And I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. I'm going to stop. I'm going to evaluate. I'm going to innovate. And then I'm going to try again. And I think that with those, with those stepping stones, sometimes you miss it. Sometimes you are working harder than smarter. You think that you are going after your goal. You think you're going after your dreams. You think that you're going after challenges and doing the work and taking committed action, but you were taking the same action over and over and over again, hoping for a different result, which sweetheart, like that is the definition of insanity. Committed action has to be strategic. You get to learn how to work smarter than harder. I'm all for committed action. I'm all for making it happen. I'm also all for you taking care of yourself while you do it. I'm also all for you doing this intelligently versus just doing the damn thing to do it. You make 100 calls in a day and 30 people answer those calls. 
and you've only had a conversation with five of them. Why did 25 people not want to have a conversation with you? What was it about you that triggered resistance in that call and made them want to hang up? If you're trying to maybe build relationships and create new relationships and you have to actually go business to business, why is it that you went to, you know, 10 different businesses this week and you only got two appointments? What was it about the eight businesses that didn't want to have anything to do with you? Was it the way that you built rapport with the gatekeeper? Was it the way that you communicated? Was it the way that you talked about yourself versus asking questions? What was going on? Because if you do the same pitch every single time and you get the same results, like there's something that you're not doing. So back to challenges. Where can you do more in your life? Where can you be more? Where can you become more? And if you actually had to sit down and like look at the evaluation of your life right now, um, you know, Tony Robbins talks about this, like the the life circle. I don't know if you've ever been one to to one of his events or read any of his books and stuff, but he has this circle of life where basically like draws like a pie chart, okay? And there's like eight or nine pieces of pie and each pie is a different slice. So one slice is um, family, one's fun, one is friendships, one is relationships and love, one is finances, one is your health, one is your work, career path, and like contribution, contribution and growth. So you have like nine slices there. And you were going to evaluate where you are in your life. Let's say the outside of the pie, let's say around the crust, that is a, a scale of 10. And the center is a scale of zero. And a scale of zero to 10, where are you in that sliver of the pie slice on this wheel? And if you actually draw this out and you write it out and you color in where you're at. So let's say in one area, let's say in fun, I'm at a level five. So we to color in half of that pie slice. And then I go to the next one. I'm like, family, where am I at? Mm, like six, I'm gonna color that in. All right, finances, where am I at? I'm at an eight. All right, I'm gonna color that in. <clears throat> Wherever you are at in that pie chart, every area that you see a gap, every area that is empty is an area that is a potential for you to grow in. And you developing all of you, you showing up as the best version of you, is you creating those pie pieces to hit a 10. And the thing is, is that when you hit a 10 in all the areas of your life, that's not time to stop and celebrate. That's time to get a bigger pie. That's time to think bigger, grow bigger, become more, be more. Two parts of that pie are really important. The contribution as well as growth. If right now in your life you feel like you're not doing enough or you feel like you're depressed or tired or frustrated and sad, it's probably due to one of these two pie pieces. If you are not growing in your life, you are dying. Without growth, you feel like you're dying inside. It feels like the day to day, groundhog day, the day keeps repeating over and over and over. Nothing new, nothing exciting. You're just going through the phase, you're freaking robot, just going through the motions. Normally, it's because you're not spending time on you to grow yourself, grow your mind, grow who you are. Number two in that part of the pie is the contribution piece, which is normally led to your fulfillment, how fulfilled you feel. Well, I also think I miss spirituality in that pie chart, but as a side note, your ability to contribute to others, your ability to give. Now, I don't mean necessarily financially, but I do mean to make a difference in someone's life. The days that I feel most happy, the days that I feel most fulfilled are the days that I train my clients, the days that I show up and I pour into them. And I don't think about me, I think about them, them getting results, them changing their life. You know, we work with women, not just in sales, but we also work with them like we do like trauma intervention and um, you know, work on like leadership mindset. And like the way that I see these women start off with me and have all these like things going on in their world and the way that I see them step up and take ownership of their life and responsibility and step into these powerful leaders and like watching their world change and watching them not only do it for them, but for their families, for their kids, for their, for their husbands. Like it's, uh, it's the most rewarding thing that I've ever been able to experience ever 
And the thing is, is that I would never, ever, ever be able to experience something like this, them having massive results in their life, them changing their world, if I did not do massive levels of work to become who I am right now. And how do I think that I am um, at the peak of where I'm going to be? Absolutely not. But on the days that I felt helpless and the days that I felt sad and um, not worthy and not enough and, um, you know, felt like a failure and felt like um, unloved or not appreciated or whatever was coming up for me in my past, like all those moments of the disciplines, the getting up, the reading, the learning, the developing, the healing, the working on me, it led me to the ability to change other people's lives. And that is what this is all about. You get one life, but like, it's really not about you. If you live just for you, you're probably not going to be happy. There's so many people out there that have a lot of money. They're sad. They're alone. They don't feel loved. They don't feel appreciated. Like, Robin Williams, man. Like, you would expect him to be one of the happiest guys on earth. Like, all he did was make people happy. And he literally took his life just showing, you know, how you never know what someone's going through. I want you to be the best version of you. And my intention here is to to love on you and to be real with you and have a raw, honest conversation. Uh, I don't want to sugarcoat anything. Like, I'd just rather just be real and be vulnerable and be myself with you. Are you really, like, fully living in every area of your life right now? Are you willing to face yourself, face the mirror? And tell yourself, like, hey, we got to clean this up. Hey, we're out of integrity here. Hey, we got to work on this here. Hey, I'm not doing everything that I possibly could here. And not just in your sales ability and your skill level. Because I do think that's really important. I do think facing challenges is important. I think you developing resiliency is going to make you excellent at what you do. Um, you know, you being able to put in the reps, being able to learn and grow. You doing all that and not taking care of yourself and you being not happy at the end of the day, it like it's not going to be worth it. But if you make the decision right now to want to be the best you that you could possibly be and you're willing to do the necessarily the necessary actions and committed actions to become excellent in sales, like practicing, you know, role playing, evaluating your calls, following up the way you're supposed to, nurturing your leads honoring people when you talk to them, actively listening to them, wanting to get better every single day. And in addition to all of that, you're also deciding to grow every day and learn every day, contribute to people every day, work on your health every day, like work on your spirituality every day, work with your family, sending messages to people that you care about, like working on you, you in every single area of your life, like you will be unrecognizable within a few months. You will be unrecognizable to yourself, to others around you because of you making massive changes in your life. And unfortunately, the people around you have massive impact on you. You're normally like the five people you hang out the most with, right? Like what is all their incomes look like? That's probably what yours looks like. What's their view on love and relationships? That's probably what yours looks like. Um, you know, what are their eating habits like? That's probably what yours looks like because you normally act the same as the people around you. And whenever you start making massive changes like this in you, um, the people around you are going to be like, yo, what's up? What's going on? Um, the biggest shift that I ever made in my life was moving from Houston to Miami, knowing nobody, having to start over. Um, and it gave me permission to step out outside of my comfort zone. That stepping out of my comfort zone, burning the boats, having to start all over, that was the catalyst, the catapult that pushed me to becoming successful in my career. Was I successful immediately? Absolutely not. I was not. I was failing. I was crying all the time, feeling frustrated, but I was so determined to figure it out that no matter what, I was not going back. No matter what, I was not going back. And um, this is the same thing in your sales career. When you make a decision that you really, really want to be excellent in your craft and you want to be the best at what you do, what does it look like to burn the boat somewhere, to make a full decision, to really commit to yourself and not just to you, but to your vision for what you want? Why the heck do you want to be in sales in the first place? 
Is it because maybe you want the financial freedom to take your kids on a vacation? Is it maybe that you want to go to the store and buy that dress without having to look at the price tag? Is it maybe that, you know what, you don't want to work forever. You want to stack cash, put it in real estate, and then have passive income coming in to where you can travel the world and do what you want? Is it maybe that you have a family member that's sick and that you want to make sure that you can take care of them? Like, what is it? Why do you want to do it? Because it's not about you and how you feel uncomfortable and how sometimes it's awkward and sometimes it's frustrating. It's about your reason for why you're doing it in the first place. And if you can think about that and really ask yourself, are you being the best you to make that happen and have a real come to Jesus moment with yourself? Then maybe you'd be a little bit more open to doing what's necessary and to becoming her. So what's a stretch that you can do today? I challenge you to sit with yourself today. Ask yourself if you're doing the best that you can. Ask yourself if you're overworking yourself, if you're being real mean to yourself right now. Ask yourself if you are, you know, contributing back to people, making somebody's diff making the difference at someone's day today. Are you spending time growing and spending time learning? Are you putting a mask on and pretending like everything's okay when it's not? Are you hitting your numbers or are you falling short do you look at that phone and say oh I don't want to do anything because you haven't taken the time to work on you so that you can do it are you getting the support are you in an environment that serves you do you have women around you that are making money doing the thing inspiring you so that when you call them to complain instead of them complaining with you they go hey mama like you are a leader like let's go shake it off I'm with you I believe in you you got this you get to have people around you like that. That is so important. And so, you know, if you're not in a group like that, like my women in sales group on Facebook is so incredible. Um, women in sales, that's all it's called, women in sales on Facebook. It's a Facebook group. I think we have around right like 4,000 something people in there at this point. I'm not sure. But we do trainings once a week. Post in there for help and support. Like if you need help, like we have so many women in there women that are my clients, women that have been there for a while, like I would be more than willing to reach out to you and support you and be there for you emotionally, sales-wise, whatever it would be. You have to be willing to make the ask. Part of loving yourself is asking for support. And I had one of the biggest issues with this because I hate asking for support. Sometimes I take the world on my shoulders and I just like to figure it out myself and tell it like shit hits the fan and then I have to ask somebody for something. And I've learned over the years to start asking for support when I feel like I need it. When I feel like it's just barely starting, like, oh, my God, this is frustrating. I just need somebody to uh, vent to them, not agree with me, but pour into me and be like, Kayla, like, who are you? What are you wanting to create in this world? And and hold me responsible to my destiny. Hold me responsible to the woman that I want to be so that I step into it and that I want to carry out what I need to do. You get to have people in your life like that. So your first step is to stretch. Ask for support in that group if you need it. Um, I challenge you to sit with yourself again today and kind of evaluate where you get to where you get to make some changes and then make one. What would be a huge committed action in order for you to get to where you want to go? Let's say like you really know that like you're doing everything great, but your eating habits suck. Like you know that you are eating dessert every single night and you feel tired in the morning, your energy's low, your pants are fitting a little tight. Um, trust me, I've been there. Um, sometimes I don't know why I have a croissant problem until I put on my pair of jeans and they don't button and I'm like, crap, like lay off the croissants for a few months, Kayla. Those are like my favorite. <laughs> but I'm just being real with you. If you were having a problem like that, then maybe your committed action is to go into your fridge and your pantry and to the, throw away or to give away everything that's not serving you. Hey, these Twinkies got to go. These Oreos, they got to go. Um, nothing against those. I'm just saying if you want to get a little bit better, like remove the things that are not serving you. Let's say that your evaluation is like, hey, your numbers and your sales are not that great. Maybe you get to sit down and watch a few of your sales calls and see where you are falling short. Maybe if you evaluated yourself and you took a minute, you're like, oh, why did I say things like that? Why did I ask that question like that? Oh, that person didn't really respond the way I thought that they did in the conversation. You're going to get better. You're going to grow. You're going to learn. Maybe if you really want to develop advanced strategies in sales, you sign up for a advanced sales program, you know, like mine. 
Like that's there for you to support you and be there for you. We only work with women, 158 different industries. And I'm not trying to just promote that. I'm just saying like you have things around you that could support you. You have to be willing to step out and get the help. Get the help, get the support. Um, if it's a contribution is really low in your category, maybe you can go make someone's difference to make a difference in someone's life today. Buy somebody a cup of coffee, smile at somebody at a cash register. Most people walk around and they do not get the experience of what it is like to be seen by somebody, what it's like to feel important from someone. Your presence, your gift of your presence is the most incredible, epic gift that you can give anybody. So I honor you today. I challenge you today to step into uncomfortability, to develop resiliency for yourself so that you can be proud of yourself, so that you can know in your heart that you are going to becoming, you are going to become the woman that gets every single thing that she puts her mind to, that nothing will stand in her way, regardless of what comes at her. She is here to stand for the life that she wants to have, and she's willing to do the work in every area of her life, even though it feels really uncomfortable sometimes. She's willing to do it because she's responsible for her destiny and who she wants to become. I honor you. I love you. Make sure that you are subscribed to this podcast. If you know another woman that needs to hear this poor this message to her, send this message to her. Please comment below, like thoughts, anything that we can support you with. We always try to respond to every single comment here. I love you. I honor you. I hope that you have an absolutely epic day and I will see you on our next episode.